loyalty cracks here and on this video we will build updated racing tiny whoop which will be on this recently launched 5 in 1 board from beta fpv so we have literally everything on this small board and we will build the drone we'll see also how light it will be and how well it will fly so with the package we, we receive brand new 5 in 1 board from beta fpv straight from here i can see that we have way easier and bigger pads to solder our motors and also the metal usb connector was replaced with this lighter plastic connector see so in the package we receive the 5 in 1 i noticed that we that we need to solder the ELORES receiver wire which will be somewhere here we also receive brand new beta fpv 90 degree pigtail power connector that I will re replace later for my lighter one the special adapter for the plastic connector on the FC UFL VTX dipole antenna and also the rubber dampers with the ELORES antenna wire and I will use two different parts that are provided with this 5-in-1 board which will be the lighter power pigtail and also the lighter VTX antenna so we also use different parts because the original 90 degree pigtail have a lot of material right here and it's a little bit too heavy to if you want to really lightweight build I just doing my own ones also as long with the VTX antennas the original VTX antenna weights around 0.4 grams and my own, my own VTX antenna weights something around 0.1 grams, so it's like 4 times lighter. Original Beta FPV 90 degree pigtail power wire, so it's really close to 1 gram. But my own mate BT 2.0 90 degree pigtail power wire weights something around 0.8 grams, so it's a little bit lighter. And when I cut these wires, it will be even lighter because for sure I don't need such a long wire so you cut it like right on this spot maybe on the build I will cut it even a little bit more so now it will be like 0.5 grams 0.55 exactly so it's really close to half of the weight of this pigtail so I think it's pretty worth it to do your own ones I will use 28k happy model 0702 motors from previous build because they have really nice performance and a lot of punch and also we'll be using these latest lightweight hq prop ultralight props and what i know it uh, the first version was a little bit more fragile so during the crash it these props were not bending but they were just breaking or exploding but i heard that the latest version of these ultralight props during the crash they will just bend out or will just bend so you can bend them back and still fly again for the canopy you can use also the same tpu canopy that i used on my earlier build or this beta fpv air canopy the, you can choose really what which one you like the most because the weight difference is really small maybe this one is like 0 0.05 grams heavier than this one for the frame we will use meteor 65 air frame that was slightly modified by me and i show you how because i want this build to be really lightweight so i will be using the nylon screws for the motors and in order to, to make them durable i transferred a little bit the holes that exactly i'll be using these screws so for the outer pattern i will be using normal metal screws but to the to the like inner side i will use the plastic screws and of course for the camera also you can choose but i i chose the better picture quality so I'll be using the same CO3 Beta FPV camera from previous build. It's a little bit heavier than like from Nano 3 camera. 
but it has better picture quality and also a little bit of metal protection around these lenses. So like we can see this 5-in-1 five five in board is really nice. We have a lot of features in here and also you can see that motor solder pads are a lot bigger than like for example in the cross IO board when they were really tiny. So you have the black, black box, serial ELRAS, we can flash separate ELRAS firmware on it. We have also better and faster processor along with the black box storage. So this I, so this all-in-one board is really packed. And as it comes, right here we have our UFL connector for the VTX antenna. And for the ELRS antenna, ELRS antenna is not soldered in this one case, which I like because we can choose on which side we want the ELRS antenna. So the solder pad for the ELRS antenna is right here. So we can solder it by this side or we can flip the IO board and maybe solder it on this side. And I was really thinking how to orientate this board because I had some 5-in-1 boards and in each one I after some time I had some problems like problems with broken VTX or problems with the ELRS that was just not working after some crashes and I thought how I can flip this 5-in-1 board on this frame to mitigate the risk of damaging it so I think that I will put it like like this also, if you're mounting uh, FC board, the critical spots that you should look for to be protected, I think, is are all of the crystals right here. So you can spot which one is the the resonating crystal that have metal cover. So I can show you right now more precisely. We have one right here. We have one right here, and also we have two of these, one is here and one is here and also it's great to look for the BMI 270 gyro which this IO board uses to be protected which is right here on the back so I think that we have most of the fragile parts are on this side of the board so I think that this side will be the best to be down here so the part that will be down on the bottom of the hoop will be the best protected because down on the bottom we have all the lipo back parts and duct also duct connections so the parts of the frame will protect it and this is the orientation with the normal canopy i think if you are using max stinky's canopy that is using only three mounting points the really great way to mount it will be like this because still all the fragile parts will be down at the bottom and you can still connect the the data connector because right here will be just a clear spot because the canopy will take only like space between these three screws but I'm using the four point mounting canopy so it will be hard to connect the, the USB adapter or each time I need to unscrew this part of the canopy in order to connect my wire so we just mount it like this and this space will be always free to connect the data line. So enough talking, let's get start building. Baby weight. So we have we can drop it on scale. So drone is with everything, with the props, with the screws. So as you can see, also I use the nylon screws in inner side to also reduce the weight a little bit. So we have 16.3 grams. So also this air canopy is nice because it's stiff but if you hit something really hard 
it's easier to break your camera lenses. So also I soldered the ELRS antenna is on the top of the flight control and of course it's glued by B6000 by to these two chips to stay on the place and not move around and short anything out. I also glued the ultra tiny VTX antenna down at the bottom right here. So everything is glued and nicely secured so it will also improve our durability during the crashes. And also we will test this new Bed FPV Lava 260 mAh 1S BT 2.0 LiPo batteries that have ADC rating so this is really high C rating even 10 C higher than this my old trusty BT 2.0 Tattoo 300 and we will compare these brand new LiPos which one will be better in lightweight 65mm tiny whoop like for com comparison that already a lot of people using these Tattoo 300s they weigh something around 8.4 grams and these brand new 260mAh lava packs weigh around 6.9 grams so it's over a 1 gram lighter so in tiny whoop this is a lot of difference also we will measure the voltage sec on both of these so on Tattoo we have a little bit more capacity but lower C or C rating. On the Lava Packs on the other hand we have less capacity but higher C rating. I'm really curious on which one we will have more power and more flight time. Or maybe we will have more flight time on this one but more power on this one. We'll check on this video also. So first, I will try 300 million power tattoo lipo, and all these lipos are overcharged. So right now the bed we, we have something like 4.17 volts, and we can start. After the start, I have something around 4 volts. And as you can see, I, I needed to move to the living room because already I had some problems with the VTX. As you can see, the tiny wood flies really really well. I can feel that it has, it has a lot of grip in the air, but the VTX is already, it handles crashes pretty alright. But I have some problems with the DTS. Okay, so as you land, I have like 3.3. I don't want to break this light bulb because it's brand new. So we have a real little sack on this. Okay, so we will be perform next test. It will be endurance test. And I will see just how long I can fly with this Tattoo 300. And then we will compare with the, with the Lava 260. And I'm already getting the core temperature warning because this board is heats up like crazy. For count flight I got 4 and um, 4 minutes and 40 seconds, so it's still not bad for a damaged only one board. This is 260 million pack. I will just fly it slow and check how long we can fly it. And this 16.3 grams finally.
So we are back again after some flights and what I can tell you guys this tiny whoop was flying really really nice I could really feel how light it is but it have problems with the video transmitter and maybe I reach out to beta FPV and tell and just give them a feedback to improve because this 5-in-1 it's really early early model of this board is version 1.0 so maybe later they will improve this 5-in-1 board but for now I think I will still stay with my 65 Pro racing build so this tiny whoop is 2 grams heavier but it's way way more durable and also runs a lot cooler so even when I crash after a lot of obstacles or when I crash in a tree so this is really not easy to get to this place to pick this tiny whoop out it can be here like for even 4 and, and 10 minutes and the VTX will not melt itself so fast like on these 5-in-1 board VTXs they, they are running really hot and, and you can a lot easier damage the VTX on this board than the separate one on this build also I think maybe beta FPV could improve this 5-in-1 board because my 65 Pro is using this uh, cross flight controller and this is also from beta FPV and it's really amazing flight control is way way more durable than this fresh 5-in-1 I have even one right here and maybe I will build another tiny whoop on it because it's performing like a champ and about this 5-in-1, maybe I give some feedback to beta FPV to improve or maybe I just got faulty, faulty unit. So we will see how it will go with this one. Beside VTX issues, the tiny whoop was flying literally like a laser beam to the point it was really pinpoint. I could feel that it have a lot of grip in the air thanks due to tri-blade propellers but it also was really lightweight it was accelerating so easily so from fly from like flight performance perspective it was amazing but I still had that VTX issues so maybe later they can fix this Also some new information about my case with this 5-in-1 all-in-one board. So after my testing I reached out to Beta FPV and described to them my problem with the VTX of this tiny whoop. So they just said that my met method of uh, constructing this tiny whoop, like the board placement was, was not correct because my antenna, I mounted the end with the VTX antenna inside of the frame in order to protect it and uh, they said that, that I can move this antenna away or try the different type of one but this antenna for, was for just from another whoop and was working totally fine so I have even couple of these standard antennas that I can show you right now so I even tried this normal antenna this is normal stack antenna, it's, it's like 0.5 grams, grams heavier but the signal of the VTX was still not good and I got even shorter flight time because tiny whoop was a little bit heavier due to increased weight of this antenna I moved this, uh, this lightweight antenna like on this spot and the feed was still the same 